All right, so what's going on now? When I pull on the, uh, the door, the upper latch disengages, but the lower one does not, and that's because the rod that connects from the handle down to the lower latch has disconnected. So all we have to do, it's really not that difficult. Pop this out. Screwdriver is probably not the best. You might want to use a uh, trim tool if you have one sitting around. If not, screwdriver is probably the best. Or your fingernails. I just clipped mine last night, so that's not going to work. So then we pull this off. It's a little bit difficult since we're, you know, working this way. Normally we'd have just the door open. Everything would be good. Uh, also, you're going to notice you're not going to have any of this crap. You know, this is all my, my sound deadening uh, and insulation and stuff. So you'll have much easier access. And what we're looking for, you can kind of see there's this rod right here. There's two of these, and they both connect right here. This is the fulcrum. So the one goes up to the top, and obviously that one's working. We can see it working. But the bottom one is the one we need to get to. And that can be kind of tricky. It looks like, actually, now that I'm back here, my best course of action might be to take off the side latch and gain access that way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Looks like it's going to be a, no, let's call it a T20. I'll be right back with that. All right, so it's off by a bit. It's actually a Torx 30 over here. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So to deal with this, all we have to do is back these two out, and then we'll have more room to slide our hand down and, and get to that other post. Hopefully, if you're lucky, though, it's just the top one, because the top one's easier to get to. But mine's not, so we're going to go ahead and, and get down here. All right, not great, not horrible, though. Okay, so that's that. That's our uh, driver door latch. Common for these, that metal right there where the spring goes into the plastic either the spring will break or that plastic will break if you haven't replaced that yet and your truck is well 20 years old now i'd go ahead and pick these up you can grab them pretty cheap i think i paid maybe 10 for the pair on ebay so go ahead and do that before it's too late it's much easier to do before it breaks i heard so now i got the the light shining in the side. Okay, perfect. Hold on. Okay, so you see this mess of wires here. That was my solution last time. Actually, a uh, pipe clamp, uh, hose clamp, and some wires to hold it all together, and it worked. That's not the problem side. The other side is the problem side. So I'm going to have to figure out how. See, I can't even get the camera down there. But all the way down there, if we could look past this piece of metal right here, we would see where it connects. So I believe mine did fall off at the bottom. This is gonna be more of a hassle than I was planning on dealing with today. In order to give myself more access, I'm gonna take the, uh, the door skin off. And in order to do that, I have to hit that bolt right there. And then there's another one off to the uh, cassette holder there, whatever it is, I think it's a handle. So the lighting is not gonna be great for this. Let me just do it and we'll pick you back up in a sec. And these, uh, just like the majority of the uh, other screws on the interior of the vehicle, these are gonna be seven millimeter heads keep that in mind it's always a good idea go next time you're at the depot grab one of these at seven millimeter I have two so that's out now now this is gonna be difficult if you saw the video where we just replaced these uh, oh no I removed the door skins yeah we replaced the latches that was probably well, two years ago now much easier to do with the door open and now I have to figure out how to get the door skin off without a lot of room. If you can't tell, I don't have a back seat anymore. I replaced that, I don't know when that was, 17, 18, somewhere around there. I replaced that to put this more useful shelf to me. So I have storage underneath and then I can put stuff on top of here too. I also have some, some tie downs and then tie downs in the back also. So that's why uh, mine is like this. You'll have a little bit more room because the, the edge of the back seat is gonna give you a few more inches. I, I designed this to be right up to the top, not thinking that the door might break one day, multiple times. So, I'm just gonna detach from this side, the side that'd be closer to the front of the truck. I'm gonna pop these off just by applying pressure you know, toward the inside of the truck and then it should snap off. I'll try to show you what I'm doing here. And again, I'm kinda of doing this blind. So this is the edge of the door skin interior. What I'm gonna do is, is push that forward you can't even really get much on there. Yeah, I'm gonna use both hands, hold on. You 
heard that first one pop. That's a good sign. There's another one. Should only need one more. I could probably squeeze my hand down there now, but it's gonna not be comfortable. Mm. There we go. Okay. So now you see we have in this, okay. I mention this every time we deal with interior plastics. I was trying to pop this one day when it was like three degrees outside. Don't do that. Work on your the plastics when it's at least 50 degrees and has been for a while. So that way there's more flex into the plastic or else you get, you'll end up with that. You don't want that. So now, now I should be able to, to reach my hand in here. So again, you're not gonna have all the soundproofing, but you see right there where I just put my hand through, you're gonna reach in there and feel for that little, that metal rod that I pointed out a moment ago. We'll take a closer look at it again in a second, but I'm gonna put you down and, and fish around for that. With any luck, you're gonna see the door pop open in just a moment. It really has nothing to do with luck. I found the broken half. How does that connect to the latch? There it is. Oh no, you know what? Now <laughs> the top part closed again, there we go. So I got nervous there because this one, because I had started pulling from over here first, that one was in weird. Normally you'd pull from the top and kind of work your way down. So, here we are, let's free up some more space. All right, that's a pretty decent lighting situation actually. So this is the connecting rod that holds it all together. And this piece of nylon is 19 years old with a, a ton of freeze thaw cycles. So that becomes brittle over time. Now, inside of there, you're gonna see this white piece of nylon. Now that's relatively new because it came with my latches that are a year or two old. So what needs to happen is that this piece right here actually clamps on. You see how it's moving there? And should hold onto the, the threaded portion of that rod. Should. So we have the slack down. The problem with it though, is that it's very hard to get it to, to actually connect and clamp, click shut. Because as it is right now, it'll work once or twice. You see it's lifting the latch, but it's gonna fall, fall apart sooner or later. And we're gonna lift up on our plastic, kind of guide that in. Yeah, I don't know why I can't get it to click. That was my problem before too. Let me grab a needle nose. All right, I actually think better than a needle nose might just be a regular pliers. Go ahead. Now you see, maybe not because my hand's in the way, how I have the pliers on the side of the nylon and then on the other side of the, the metal clasp. All right, so let's see. Now it doesn't want to connect. My guess is that it's because the, the clamps I bought are not GM. So whatever sweatshop made these little pieces of plastic probably used crap plastic. But as you can see, really it'll work for a year or two as long as the, the plastic bites into, or the nylon kind of bites into the metal or vice versa. So let's see. So that looks like it would be working. We can test it out in a sec. But what I think I'm gonna do once we test it out is then reinforce that with some more of my mechanics wire. You can see now there's, that's the mess I was talking about earlier. So this happened also on the top side. So it's all rigged up, but it's working. She's about to hit 300,000 miles either tonight or tomorrow. Depends on how rowdy I get. She's at like 299. 965 I think when I pulled in the driveway so it's getting exciting. All right back with some wire this time I will be using the needle, needle nose so what I'm gonna do and you'll see if you're in this position once you get down here what is going to be required of you know which direction you want the pressure to go there's really no right or wrong way to do this this isn't something out of the the repair manual so all I'm looking to do right now is ensure constant pressure so that it doesn't slip off again. So I just went around the whole assembly, going both over and under that little nub right there 
and then on this side also. So I mean, it's gonna fall apart again sooner or later, but the last time I made a repair like this, it's lasted now three years, so you get better and better each time you do it. Before we put the door skin on, we're gonna go ahead and close everything up and test it. Okay, it works. <laughs> Why I was having trouble is because without these bolts in there, that just moves freely, so there's no pressure against it as there needs to be. Okay, if you didn't see how it came out before, you'll get to see how it goes in now. Pretty straightforward. And these are uh, side to side specific, so you'll see this is the left side. It's got the handle pointing that way. We need to ensure that the actual locking assembly is lined up properly. So we pull that in, and with our free hand, all we need to do is make sure the hole's lined up at first. There we go. Don't over torque it, you don't need to. So now let's try it. Mmm, not great. So you see, at the bottom latch, I didn't leave enough movement. Okay, so I don't know if the audio picked up on that or not, but my uh, cheap eBay solution handles that were working great for a long time just broke. So that's an issue. Not really though, because that's easy enough to swap out. Somewhere down here, I have things a little bit too tight. I might have put the, the rod too low. But the good news is I can still reach in and open it without issue. And the door is secure, both top and bottom. There's no moving around. You want to see it again? So that's the... This part sucks. It's never any fun when you break stuff trying to fix other things. Putting this thing back on, really not that not that difficult. This is just some kind of, either, it's either a sound barrier or a vapor barrier, but you'll see that is a hole for the rod. It just jams in there. There's no wrong way to do that. Oh, what if I lost mine? Screw it. Now this is very simple because it lines up. There's two screw holes right here and we just have to lift. Remember to put this through our little cubby hole. So all that happened there was I just went around giving it a, a good tap to get those in. This one's broken, been like that for a couple years, and now the one that's over here is completely missing. So to give you an idea, like, is that a big problem if those break? No, not really. You know, as long as you have most of them, and then if that rattles going down the street, which it shouldn't, unless you lose like four or five of these, but if it does, you can just jam something in there, like a piece of rubber, that'll take care of that. Sooner or later, I'll epoxy those back the way they should be, but... I mean, when everything works, what's the difference? I'm not selling the truck, so. So now let's put this back on. Very simple, just pull the door handle down, line it up. And now it's got two little, I should have showed you, but like two little guides that go down to the bottom and the clips are at the top. So you just pop those in, that's that. Now we have these two seven millimeters, we're pretty much done. So we'll wrap it up now. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything you saw today, good jokes and bad jokes, leave all that down in the comment section. I will reply to you as quickly as I can. Usually get back pretty fast. Even if you have a question that doesn't really have anything to do with what you saw today, but you have this truck and don't feel like looking for the other answer, there's a good chance I know it. I mean, I've never rebuilt the transmission in these, but I, I have watched it enough times to be able to answer. That's really the, the most difficult thing about this truck is the transmission which even that's kind of a gift. Thanks for watching, I hope you have a great day.